Oh, hang on. I've just got a message from um, Andrew, uh, who is joining us. Let me just see. Saying he's got technical problems getting in. I know Ali upstairs has problems getting in. He couldn't get into the meeting. Um, I'll send him the link. Do you want to just start us off and I'll just pick Andrew? So Andrew. Yeah, I mean, um, it might be helpful to go do a quick hello, um, start around, um, and I'll just start with yourself, Robert, and then once you've introduced yourself, if you just want to nominate somebody else to, to say a quick hello. Thanks. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, I'm co-chair of North Berwick Coastal Community Connections. Um, started off as a volunteer in the project uh, beginning of lockdown last year. Um, picked up uh, the telephone befriending role and uh, for some reason I've now become uh, one of the two co-chairs. So I'm um, happy to join the, the meeting this morning and look forward to hearing what you have to say. I'm sorry, um, uh, Parveen, you could go next. Hi everyone, I'm Parveen. Um, I'm the Aging Well Coordinator for East Lothian. Um, my job is to basically promote physical activity across the county for older adults. So like Robert, I'm um, really interested to hear kind of what we're going to have to say today. Uh, Roseanne? Sorry, I was trying to find somebody's name and I cannot find it for love no money. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm from Dementia Friendly Trinet uh, and recently nominated with Carrie from Penny Pit. I can't remember Carrie's second name. If I don't think about it, it'll come to me uh, to be co-chair of the health and well-being or oh, sorry. Uh, Shona. <laughs> Morning everyone. I'm Shona Cunningham. I'm the Move More coordinator for East Lothian. So that's a Macmillan funded program um, in partnership with Enjoy Leisure and East Lothian Council and my role is to support people living with and beyond cancer in East Lothian to be more physically active through physical activity program or their own activity so I link up with Aging Well and lots of other community organisations and groups um, and hope to do more so as we move forward so we can support more people living with and beyond cancer. That's me. And we'll go with Wilma. Hi, I'm Wilma Portress. I'm from East Lothian Libraries. Um, we're very keen when we start opening our doors to get our groups in, um, even if it's just a wee coffee, tea, chat, um, that we can support that. I'm also very keen on um, things like chair yoga and things that maybe for the infirm that we can do in the libraries and see where we go from there. But we're just excited to start welcoming people back and hopefully we'll get our groups up and running again. Um, I don't see anybody's name on my screen, unfortunately. So, uh, Maya, can you just choose someone? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Avi? Uh, yeah, okay. yeah, you're no problem. Um, so, so my name's Avi Sharma. I'm a GP and I'm a hot yoga teacher as well. And I, I have a passion for yoga, lifestyle fitness, li lifestyle medicine and fitness. Um, so it's really good to meet all of these and see such a wide um, variety of people interested in the same thing and my, my biggest thing is just movement I don't care who the person is what age they are what condition they've got if we can start getting people moving that is the key so um, I, I met Sue uh, through the yoga for health training I think we've both done the teacher training for this and this is certainly one of the the areas that's the closest to getting something like yoga and mindfulness into the NHS so I kind of use both hats, I think, to try and draw these two things close together in terms of patient care. So very glad to be here. I wish we had more like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Jude, I don't know if you'll be able to say hello if you've got all your background noise. I think she sent a message. Oh, she's given a little, okay, okay. Sorry, I've unmuted myself briefly, but I've sent on the chat. Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, don't worry. It's okay. Um, and then we've had we had Andrew come in, but I think he's left again. Possibly he might pop back in. Hopefully, 
Um, I'll just say a quick hello for those who don't know me. Um, I'm Maya and I'm working um, with Sue um, for Dementia Friendly East Lothian and currently on a Celebrating Communities project um, where we're having lots of conversations about different, different themes. So it's really, really lovely to see everybody here um, and thank you very much for taking the time. Um, and I'm sure you all know it's a physical activity that we're looking to speak about today. So uh, Sue, I don't know if you want to continue from there. Yeah, I was just checking to see if Nicola had, had WhatsApped me, but she's not. So hopefully she should join us. Um, and Andrew's pop, trying, to, trying to get in. He's having a bad day, I think, with his uh, IT. So that Andrew's from Port Seton and, uh, Preston Pans Community Centre, part of the PSG team, and has got some experience in this kind of area. So I hope he will join us eventually. Um, I'm Sue, I am uh, run Dementia Friendly East Lothian and I'm also a yoga teacher and absolutely like Abby says, get folks moving. I don't know if you saw that research out this week about um, how, many, how many minutes you've got to move to make up for sitting. And I've got this brilliant thing about Banner saying sitting kills, um, uh, which I don't often drag out, but remind myself with it. Um, so, well, physical activity just comes up all the time. Just to give you a bit of a reason the, for, for the conversation, we've been working with a lot of communities, people with dementia and carers, and this urge to get active, to get out and about, to do things is very strong at the moment. And we've also got the link workers around helping people connect to activities in the community. Um, and there were two conversations, one of which is how do we get people out and about and active and, and all the rest of it. And that came up also in the digital conversation. How do we get people connected? But there's another discussion which um, quite a lot of you in here will uh, can help us with in a way or talk through with us, which is connect people to what? You know, where how do we give people quality options for different choices and different ways of keeping active that are sustainable? And that they can afford and so it might you know some people in North Berwick might be able to afford you know three pound fifty to come to the aging well where you know Parveen reduces the price of my yoga cost massively by giving free rooms from the council but in a, but not everyone can afford that so how do we develop these models um and um that's something that puzzles a lot of yoga teachers are working with that because we're very committed to addressing health inequalities also and yoga for health is part of that um, so it's walking, it's uh, it's climbing, it's dancing, it's exercise, it's all of those things. And I'd hoped that um, Enjoy Leisure, Jen was going to join us, but um, we're linked into Enjoy Leisure too, about obviously a major resource and uh, player um, in all of this. So and that's where it comes from, is we know people want to get out and about, we know some people need a bit of extra help and encouragement, but how do we make sure people have good quality, accessible, sustainable solutions? So that's me. That's that's um, why why we thought it was a conversation having around that. So over to you guys. What do you think? What ideas? Do you want to share what you're doing that's relevant to that or thoughts? Well, from Mosselburgh Libraries, as you know, Sue, I've just came here recently from Preston Pans area and I'm wanting to get a sort of walk and talk started. I don't know if you can help with this, Parveen, um, from the library where they don't have to meet in the library. If it's easier to meet somewhere on the ESC, because there's a lot of nature around this area, there's some beautiful walks up by the ESC. And just people, they don't have to be mega fit walkers, just maybe a donder, a nice wee donder. Um, and how we go about getting the word out there they can either meet in the, at the library and obviously keep it socially distanced and take it down by the harbour there's a nice walk down there along the beach along the links so but it's how we go about getting that word out um so well i'll obviously maybe touch base with you like after the meeting but um mm. we've actually just started one up in haddington um and i was actually planning on kind of reaching out uh, to mm -hmm. once the group had been set up because it's actually been quite successful so um brief overview they, we they meet once a month and um, they're given books and within that month they read it and they come back on a monthly basis and they talk about it and they walk walk at the same time mm -hmm. so um they're getting everything with physical activity the social element as well 
Um, they meet outside the library at the moment just because of obviously restrictions and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm happy to kind of have a chat with you about that, um, help with the promotion, help kind of raise awareness of it. Um, so that's something that I can definitely work with you with and um, be happy to do that. Yep, brilliant. That's great. Because I just found that in Muscle there's very little that is actually going on for sort yes. of elderly people. There's no daycare centre now. It's just very limited. Yeah. So the more we can do to help, the better. Okay. And you're on the council email, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's mm. fine. So I'll, I'll, I can give you a wee buzz there. Um, and if anyone has any input and wants to kind of join in with that by all means um definitely yeah that's fine I'll pop that oh, yeah. Thank you very I, was, I was just going to feed in and say that obviously that I would love to link up with that because a lot of the participants that are coming through from the Musselburgh area don't necessarily have a huge amount apart from what's already existing within mm-hmm. um the leisure centers which may or may not be appropriate for them and it is probably that more sociable and a bit more casual walking that um would encourage them a bit more mm-hmm. than yeah. a fitness thing yeah um, definitely and of Just course so, say, we donned ours um for them yeah. and obviously when we're allowed to they could come back to the library and have a wee cup of tea after yeah. chat about their walk get books if they want so yeah, yeah. just it's taking away that isolation aspect as well It'd yeah. be good to take that conversation into the health and well-being group in Musselburgh. Janice McLeod mm-hmm. she's looking at all of this at the moment and um, yeah. really keen to, uh, re- she's got lot, there's lots of great connections on that uh, health and well-being group. Um, yeah. So yeah. she'd be really supportive about this. I'm trying to get timing. someone onto that, Sue, for to be part of that group. Fantastic. Um, mm-hmm. Fantastic. And I'm then also- you can link into the area partnership. I'm also just, um, I will be looking into uh, a possible gardening sort of opportunity, maybe in Lewisville Park or something like that, because I've had some initial discussions before the world imploded. And um, I'll be looking at that again to see if there's something there that people could sort of drop in even and um, help the the staff in the in the park but it's just that more connecting with nature um, a bit of exercise but there's obviously benches and things there if people do need to rest or have um, and just want to be around and so there's no pressure so that could possibly tie in as well if even if it was just a wee jaunder through the park yeah could I chip in um as you probably all know we we uh were set up to tackle social isolation and loneliness in the, the coastal wards, which ranges from uh, Aberlady to Whitekirk, North Berwick in the centre. And uh, having had almost a year of um, resorting to telephone befriending, weekly calls to, to people, um, we've, we're delighted that we're, we're now able to go back to some um, more joined up activities, uh, even, albeit on a relatively small scale. It's mostly one-to-ones at the moment. So um, volunteers are now meeting with our members uh, on a one-to-one basis in cafes in the town. And uh, one of the most popular things uh, that's that's uh, arisen in the last few weeks is what we call buddy walks, um, where a volunteer, a suitably trained volunteer, um, who they've all had the paths for all training, we've got 12 of them at the moment, um, take out a member for a walk. Now, I, I did one last week, um, having done the training tail end of last year and hadn't actually used my training until last week. Um, and I took out uh, one of our members, um, who, who's, uh, who's, who's suffering from uh, dementia and, and really struggles um, to express himself now. His, his, uh, his ability to, to say what is, what is in his head is, is almost non-existent. But I've known him for years through our church and that provided me with a, a great uh, opportunity which, which a stranger to him might not have had because I was able to work out what he was, he was trying to, to tell me about. Um, and uh, we, we had a coffee uh, as part of it, and um, I, I, I really enjoyed it. I think he did. Um, uh, he's, he's a very good nature chap and uh, is, is really lovely to be with. But, you know, I think one of the, the most important aspects of that activity was the relief that it gave to his spouse. She had a couple of hours on her own um, without having to worry about what her husband was doing. So that's just one example, and I'm sure it's reflected by, by others. 
um, we're, we're talking about doing group walks so on a, on a bigger scale than than one to one and we've got a meeting next week um uh the local rugby club here is quite keen to to help us with facilities so um we've got a volunteers meeting up there and exploring the possibilities in that area so uh i, I think it's uh it's it's a good thing it's it's not hard exercise in any sense um but it's is getting people out and as i said uh I suspect in more than one case, it's also providing a useful space for, for, for the carers, for, for these people. Okay, I'd like to follow, oh, sorry, Abby, sorry. No, 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 on you, please, ladies first. <laughs> uh, just really briefly, a follow on from Robert. Um, I think most of you will know that we run group walks, but I think within the past year, um, I've noticed there is a slight gap in the provision for buddy walks. Um, and it is something that I think I've spoken to you about, Sue, is like, it's something I would love to be able to kind of get involved with. And I think um, I would love to get you guys on board with it to kind of all come together to try and maybe support that. Um, obviously, first and foremost, we need the volunteers to be able to, to run that and they have to go on the training. So that's the hardest part. Um, but once we have that, we're kind of good to go. But I've just noticed a, a big decline in people, people's walking, um, you know, and I think just to build their confidence back up, they just need that one-to-one -to, -one to allow them to then advance into a group. You'll see that yourself, Robert, as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a good place here to talk about that and potentially look at, you know, how do we how do we go about that? So do we just recruit a bank of volunteers? Who, you know, who's, who are they going to fall under? Um, find the training, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I definitely think it's something that needs to be focused on over the next wee while, definitely, until things get back to normal. Hey, right, so I, I was just going to just follow up. Well, first, like I said at the beginning, Sue, thanks for putting something to, like this together. I think it's really good to get so many people from different roles with the same agenda which is to get people more active and, and get them moving so, and I'm trying to think what, what what can I bring to the table so probably the biggest thing I would say with my GP hat on is have confidence in what you're doing like it does not matter how much activity they do something is going to make a difference that that's that's what the medical research shows you can confidently say now, if someone can be more active in their life, it will have a benefit, not just for their physical health, but also for their mental health. So whatever the setup you're doing to start that process, um, uh, Sean, I think you mentioned gardening. You know, th there's so many benefits from that. And, and like you'd said as well, Robert, the, the idea of meeting up and having a chat, like social isolation, there's facts that show that this is just as bad as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. You know, so any activity, if you can get them involved and meeting people, is going to have an impact. Now, I would say that's probably the number one thing I would say from the medical research that's shown. For, for myself as a GP, look, I get a bit frustrated that you see, and, and this might not tie into just patients with dementia, maybe not so elderly, but I obviously see a wider range. But you have so many people on so many different medications, and there's this ad adherence to them taking the medications. It's not that pharmacological interventions are not good you want to support the pharmacological invent interventions so for me if you can do anything that's just going to focus on them breathing properly sleeping properly hydrating nutrition relaxation simple things even just like acts of kindness connections relationships avoidance of things like alcohol drugs addiction but if you can get these factors correct it will have a massive impact on all other things that secondary care or primary care are doing so i i, I would just i would just um encourage whatever process that you're trying i know cost is always a big issue but if it starts with a five minute walk then it will work and um, i would also target what does that person or those group of people enjoy the last thing is you want to make it a burden for them to go on a walk when they just don't like it that's fine, but they might like putting on a bit of music and dancing. It's whatever activity suits them that they can make as part of their lifestyle as a habit that will start that process. Abby, can I ask, I popped it in the chat. Have you got link workers over in, in, the, in the West? And we've got link workers who connect people between GPs and 
services. They seem to work very differently in different parts of East Lothian. Um, yeah. How do they fit in with, with this? Should they be the people that are help, helping us as well as Parveen or um, do they make the decision? Does any, I've never worked out quite how it fits together. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a, a, an interesting answer to that. So, so we've had a lot of family stuff at the moment. So um, I'm working a lot more from distance, uh, doing a lot more remote consultations. So I've not been interacting with link workers within surgeries recently. My understanding, however, is absolutely. I mean, when I heard of this link worker role, I mean, I just, I think it's, it's the ideal role. Uh, when I approached a couple of surgeries about it maybe a year ago, they didn't know who the link worker was. So that's what it was a year ago, then the pandemic. So I don't know where it's at just now. However, in theory, I think that is a crucial role because it is the person that can just be on the ground level that can really bring all, all sides of this together. Um, so I, I think it should work very well, maybe as the pandemic kind of loosens up and the restrictions reduce, maybe that will be opening up. Can I just, uh, we, we've got a link worker in the North Berwick and Gullen surgeries, um, just been in place for a couple of months, I think. And uh, to begin with, we were a little bit nervous about what that might mean for our project, because initially we were getting referrals from GPs. Um, and uh, then they began to dry up as the, the link worker was coming into post. But uh, it's working well. We have a weekly meeting with the, the link worker, just, just a half hour meeting. Um, we've had several referrals from her to, to our project because in practice with the, with the number of uh, people that they're, they're expected to see, there's, there's very limited uh, time for them to do very much about it. So they've got to connect them with, with other organisations or people. Um, so we're pleased, it's only a couple of months, but we're pleased with the, the direction of travel. Um, I did hear just yesterday that um, already with that appointment in those two surgeries, um, they're getting to the, to the bounds of what they can deal with. So there seems to be a bit of a a resourcing issue going forward because they've been appointed for so many hours a week and um, apparently the, the, they're almost already full up with, with the referrals they've had. So that's just uh, the position here, but it's, it's quite new. Do you guys have access to Parkrun? Is that something that you have in your area? There isn't one in East Lothian, I don't think. There, had, there was one at one point, wasn't there? There's one. Still, yeah, no, are you working at the moment? There's one yeah. in Dunbar, but park runs weren't allowed to operate. No, they're not working at the COVID. moment, are they? No, 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 they weren't allowed to operate during COVID. But oh, okay. a lot of money went to funding one in Dunbar. Okay, I've, I've never been on one myself, but I've just I've heard so many positive things about it, you know, and it's it's sometimes less about the whole activity. It's just meeting up with this group of people. And in, in the morning, you know, so just just getting that 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 interaction, I think it, it almost just gives you a sense of achievement. It's been part of a group, and it's a sense of purpose. And then when you add in the activity, you get the benefits of kind of reducing inflammation in your body. And I think there was one study in Japan that showed light activity. So just simple as a light walk for ten minutes, you can get kind of structural changes in your brain especially in the kind of emotional centres. So again, I'll just hammer down this point, whatever the activity is, something is worthwhile doing. So don't maybe stress so much. Does it have to be exercise? Like I, I teach yoga classes for free online. So it's so, so like, and I do three a week. I'm happy to share a link if anyone wants that, but it, it doesn't have to be a 90 minute class, a 60 minute class, a 30 minute class. It, it can literally just be someone lying down and sitting and breathing for one minute intentionally or going for a light walk. Rosanne, you've got a, uh, the garden in Trenent and there's a lot in Trenent, isn't there as well? Uh, well it, the garden's not quite there yet. Uh, there is the allotment. Uh, we've got a couple of community groups that come along to that. And you see the benefit with them. I think some of them that are just now actually getting to come back, they're quite excited and looking forward to it. Uh, other than that, I'm, I mean, once the park, once we do have the garden reflection, the plan is to have like a gardening club and meet there and do things, but that's not quite yeah, there yet. 
in Bloom groups as well throughout East Lothian, isn't that right? Yeah, so don't know how active obviously they are at the moment, but again, very, oh, good, good, good. Yeah. I was going to say that in, you know, that, well, thinking of, you know, the link workers that they, we've got one and a half for the surgeries in Dunbar and East Linton, they've been coming to our health and wellbeing group and they've taken off, but one of the places where they've been referring uh, people to, well, there's an organisation called The Ridge, which uh, opened up gardens at the Backlands behind Dunbar High Street. Uh, quite a lot of activity there, but as well, uh, Sustaining Dunbar uh, began and developed a Belhaven Community Garden. It began as a uh, a, play, a nice place for the patients from Belhaven Hospital to sit, but there's opportunities for community growing there, and that uh, both the Ridge and now the Link Workers are referring people, uh, both with you know social isolation issues, mental health support needs, a bit of dementia support. Uh, and also people with learning difficulties going along to, uh, you know, do sessions there uh, that a bit of garden now opening up that Belhaven Brewery wanted to uh, open up their garden and uh, area and do more with that. So uh, there is now a community gardener employed who is at the moment partly funded by the brewery, partly funded by Dunbar and East Linton Local Area Partnership, uh, looking at some funding from an organisation called the Mushroom Trust. Uh, but they are, you know, they are actively looking at involving people in the community with, uh, with gardening and outdoors. So it sounds like there's an awful lot of stuff going on. Um, uh, is this all sustainable? Because one of the problems I had, we were, it's a shame Andy hasn't made it in from Preston Pans. Um, we were running, we were trying to run the, um, I mean, the yoga for health along with gentle years, a whole yoga package for uh, people in the local surgery. The GP was right up for it. Um, but what we, what we, and actually we also wanted to get people to go for some um, water therapy, some hydrotherapy, um, and the problem each time was being able to access these for people who need it free. Yeah. Um, because for some people, even 50 pence is a barrier and it's all very well chipping in, um, but it's for that. And so we kept hitting barriers about where do we go to get the tiny bit of money um, to get this started? I mean, I, I helped, them, helped them set up the Hydra thing, just volunteering my time and went and did a pilot for about six or eight weeks. God, it was hell sitting in the hydro pool on a Friday afternoon with a group of women. Ah, it was hell, absolute hell. Anyway, it, we got a volunteer fairly quickly for that and that keeps going and um, they found a bit of money. But to make that sustainable and to make it work wouldn't cost a lot, was a massively cost effective. The GP could show quite easily that the people were using less drugs, they were happier, their quality of life was better. The usual things happened, a wee chat in the cafe afterwards, Oh, I'd really love to go swimming again. Not done it for years. Oh, I go on a Wednesday morning. Do you want to come with me? Oh, right. It just happened as, it, as in the magic that is those kind of things. And so we struggled to find a way to just get a little bit of money to make these things happen. And because of the way that the pool in Preston Pans is run, we weren't going to get it for nothing. And I don't think enjoy oh, actually. Yeah. yeah. So again, and, and um, so often it doesn't take much to make these things happen. So Wilma's got a room. She's not got a swimming pool, sadly. <laughs> we'll just get Wilma running. Thanks. Um, so we're here with our energy, our commitment, our ideas, our volunteers. And what we need from the system quite often is just a little bit of money or a little yeah. bit of support to oil the wheels. Yeah. And how do we get that? How do we leave with that in? Do we need a little widget? Um, do other places do it? Um, how do other places do it is the kind of question I've got really around that. So we've got lots of stuff, lots of ideas. What is going to make it work a bit bigger and a bit better for everybody? Yeah, you know, because say here, you know, things like 
uh, the ridge or uh, sustained in Dunbar, you know, it, it, it has all been, you know, going for pockets of money and, you know, you apply for money, you get the knockback. What you find is that, you know, you get money for short term, which is where one good thing is that it was the brewery that approached sustaining Dunbar because they were wanting to do something with their garden area. So they approached and they said, right, you know, we will put in so much money for so many years. And then, it, so it's been going looking for match funding uh, that the new headmaster of Belhaven Hill School is quite keen to have other people going and doing stuff in his grounds. Whereas previously- That's kind of a mixture of partnerships. Yeah, yeah. so local partnerships yeah. with business as well I mean, uh, Jude who's who's on the line from um, Senscot Social Enterprise Scotland we've been having a we're not the only people having this discussion about how we um, make make the access of make social prescribing or link workers work by providing things for people it's happening across Scotland Jude are you there are you able to pinpoint any ways that social enterprise can help with that because that's a great way of cross subsidy so my students that I do my yoga classes with pay for effectively work done free for the dementia friendly yoga and stuff like that that's i'm a social enterprise so i can do that um not everybody's set up like that but you know that <laughs> trading model is what social enterprises are about and frees you up from having to fill in bits of paper for grants are you there jude <laughs> should i try and she's messaged she's here But there's drilling. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you can hear us, then Judy, maybe just put into your head somehow that that uh, it would be great to find out, a, a, a look at a range of different models. So we've got something about working with local businesses in that partnership. I would put in just trading, <laughs> just trading, not for profit. Brilliant. Jude's going to put stuff in the chat there around that. We've also can, got can you know, Shona. You're doing. Sorry, Avi. Beg your pardon. Off you go. No, no, no. So I'll, I'll let you finish if you. We're just okay. I was just going to add in just it, it might give you a, a bit of a perspective in terms of your time. So, if, if if one of your thoughts is to chase GP practices to try and get sources of money from GP practices, I probably wouldn't do that. Okay, and, and it's it is, and the reason would be twofold one, the GP partners are, are, are the, the, the staff in there are, are flooded right now, and there's this backlog from the pandemic, so now there's this. There's so many patients that have their care has just been postponed for a year. So they're just a constant catch up. So you're going to GPs were time poor before. Now it's even more the case. The second thing then is if they are going to invest in something to support it, it will be evidence based. They'll go for the thing that is evidence based on a national level. It's been proven. So from my point of view, the, the closest thing I've seen as an intervention in this area would probably be yoga for health that, that sue and i have, have been trained on and that's now offered for free to gp practices and there is some take up i think there's about two thousand three thousand members across the uk in the nhs that have taken it up it's still not big numbers for something that's free that's accessible so i just it was just to give you a bit of a perspective it's not that they don't want to help absolutely i think when when that one intervention comes out that's transferable and accessible across the board, they'll be in it without a doubt. The most cynical doctor will be in it. But at the moment, I think I would not put your energies there unless you know someone within the practice and you've got a, a relationship. I think I would probably maybe think about some of the other routes. Just to add to that, um, my experience having just set up the Move More programme about a year before the pandemic hit um, was that obviously I've worked specifically with people living with cancer, but the hope is that that will expand to other long-term conditions and be supporting people just to move more in whatever way that suits and works for them and then build up on that. Um, but my learning so far has been exactly what you've said, Avi, and it's not just, or Abby, it's not just about... Um, the, the pandemic and the catch up, you know, GPs have very limited time frames with their patients anyway. So it needs to be much more sort of community focused and linked with 
the, the surgeries and not using them as the conduit. So what I've discovered is having spoken to, uh, you know, to various GPs in East Lothian, that the easiest way for them to connect is by having that individual relationship, if that's already there, which is great. So what Sue spoke about at the um, hydro pool, the doctor involved, the GP involved with that, I'm, I work closely with and was part of, of helping that come to fruition too. But it's great when there is someone that's so proactive within the community, but that obviously isn't the widest you know that's not the case necessarily on the way and it is understandable so it's kind of like we have to sort of work together in whatever way we can to interlink and to look at ways that we can get funding and sustain things in a way that's not just itty bitty little pockets of money that just makes it feel so you know that that insecurity for for people coming into it as well is known and felt so you know they might actually be part of that process eventually too so it kind of does sit within the community now unfortunately that's just the reality of of where we're at um, and uh, and how we can inter interlink and interconnect is, is the best way and see where the money can come from from that there is some obviously some money in health but there's more within the community too yeah I think those are one of the issues you know that certainly uh you, you know that uh, that the link workers are employed by different organizations because it was all done out by tender and that um, our, our two are finding that most of the referrals are coming from the GP practice in Dunbar which of course is the biggest place you know they're also covering East Linton it is also how you, you know making sure that they don't forget the rural villages where there are the issues of, well, it might be all very well and good, there's something to do in Dunbar. If you live near an old Hamstocks, there's no bus. Uh, or in inner week, the bus is very infrequent. Uh, you know, so it's making sure that they are, are there for the whole practice area, you know, not just for. Uh, the people living uh, where the population is. And I think, sorry, no, <laughs> no I'll, wait, I'll wait, you go, Jeff. Yeah, no, but it's also them knowing what's out there that, uh, you, you know, there's a whole list of things and databases of groups that groups are starting up all the time and new ones just starting up for Parkinson's support in Dunbar but it's making sure that the link workers know about them and that they don't get that many hours in the week, uh, you know, to be covering, you know, say that the one and a half for Dunbar in East Linton, that's four practices. So it's, uh, you know, making sure that uh, they don't, you know, as was being described from North Berwick, just get overwhelmed and it's also, that they that they're only meant to be having that they've got targets for how many people they see, and they're meant to be moving people through, and it's making sure that people can move through to things that they can do rather than going and sitting on waiting lists, and who manages them whilst on a waiting list. But this is the issue with that sort of funneling via the G GPs. You know, it's just. It's almost that people have got to a particular stage in that process and it's how we can get in earlier with early intervention and prevention, you know, the lovely, <laughs> um, the lovely terms we hear all the time, but actually how do we communicate with the community um, so that they know that these things exist and that is getting to people before it's too late and then there's this backlog and this log jam. Yeah. It's interesting in dementia, we've had link workers for several years and people have a legal right, um, although the practice of that is very different. And the experience is, is that actually by the time you really, really need help and support, you've stopped having your post-diagnostic support for a year because you've fallen off the other end. And what makes the difference there and why we do dementia-friendly communities, and it's just dementia, it's a plan. Shona, we've talked about this a lot. People with dementia get yeah. cancer. Hey ho. Um yeah. Um, is that um, it's the friendship and the community support that keeps people going longer. 
And it's also the peer support and friendship after the services have gone that really, really people rely on as things get really tough. And medic medicine is not the answer. It's a friend. It's not being judged, you know, when the, when the pills don't work kind of stuff um, yeah. as, with progressive diseases. Uh, and that's why we're doing the work on meeting centres, which is about looking at enhanced community support for people as they go through this, when services are just not going to be there in the way that they used to be. And, and what people need is understanding, community support and a way of connecting, but not being funneled. I think that's a beautiful way to describe the problem. Or, well, not beautiful, but it's exactly what it's like, isn't it? And we know what happens with funnels. I've put in the chat, there's, this, um, there's something called Pockets and Prospects uh, run by the Scottish Community Alliance. Um, social enterprise get a certain amount of money to buy services from other social enterprises. Right. I'm just reading from the thing. Um, uh, it's... It's a kind of self-financing system. So suppliers providing services which could help improve mental health and well-being. So physical activities were offered by social enterprises. That, I, I've explained that really, really badly. But there is one already made. And the Scottish Communities for Health and Wellbeing that we're a member of are kind of promoting that as one way to help communities provide sustainable and affordable solutions um, and actually, they're not all they're not all they're not all social enterprises. I don't think, Jude, are there? There's some fantastic the old healthy living centres. Avi, are you old enough to remember the healthy living centres? There's there's loads of them <laughs> over I'm, the way. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm 41. I'm 41. So what sure. the hills meant to be? Oh right. Oh really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Well. Oh no no. Yeah. The official title of uh, Whole Hill is uh, Whole Hill Healthy Living Centre. So I wondered why I knew the name. What it boils down to is a sports club with a bar <laughs> where they sell chips in the cafe. All right, it was that easy, was it? I mean, a lot of them over on the West Coast have really had to respond to some of this. So there's some fantastic community-led models um, that are hubs that bring together resources, support volunteers. Dunblane, they've got a community development trust that does a lot of this and means that community can actually buy out buildings and 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 work in a quite an economic model with a bit of infrastructure to support um so there are ways yeah it doesn't need to be a social enterprise um, and i don't know who who looks at these models i don't know who's looking at um the different ways we could do things so you know with a library with aging well with others it becomes financially viable to get a bit of money and cross subsidy to do some of this doesn't it? Oh my God. Um, there's just a gale is breaking out here. Anybody oh. in the... No, my sheets are just getting... No, Robert? Oh, it's okay. <laughs> well, it's a, bit, it's a bit breezy. I can, the trees are blowing around, but it's not a gale, don't think. No, it's just all... <laughs> the, I've got off, my sheets out. <laughs> I, had a, I was having a meeting with somebody from Queen, South Queensbury and the, and the weather was really windy in South Queensbury. Oh, well, it's um, coming here. It's blowing but, all the blossom but, off my sheets. She was interesting because she worked... She's uh, works for the community rail network, and her post is funded by Paths for All, and looking at how you get people being using sustainable transport mm -hmm. and doing sustainable things when they get to a destination mm -hmm. on the uh, rail network. Uh, so which links into activity. Uh, but it was a meeting with the community rail partnership. Uh, which is chaired by Harry Barker from North Ferry. It's interesting, isn't it? Area partnerships bring all this together because you bring together the tourism because this is good for visitors and that's going to be a bigger issue as well. Um, we used to get people coming down from the the from dementia friendly Portobello um, to come and when we had a group in the Hope Rooms, um, they used to come down for the day, <laughs> and that was really nice uh, because. Uh, it, they went and did some shopping and then they came in and had a cup of tea with us. Um, and it was just really, really nice because so many people have been on holiday to East Lothian. Yeah, yeah. But certainly this person that she's only been in post eight days, but it's wanting to see uh, how people can be encouraged, you know, to come on a train and be active. Uh, and but also about people <clears throat> in the local area uh, being more active as well. 
One thing, just that Rizan, that came into my head was uh, the intergenerational side of things and and some of the discussions pre-COVID that happened in Foresight uh, were about linking up and also the links with the day centres um, being really, really important. And you've got quite a cluster of day centres. Well, everybody's got, a, a what would you call it? A delight, isn't it? Like goldfinches, a delight of day centres. Um, there and that intergenerational bit the walking the keeping active the school that was it this walking bus anybody remember the walking bus where the kids walk to school and they formed yeah. a bus and yeah. sometimes take some old people along with walking. I mean that's a great way to motivate people and and get generations um working together at Dunbar we've got one round food at the grammar school um but that's the healthy eating bit where the kids teach old people about eating healthily and surprise, surprise, everybody learns and the food is good. Um, so that's something that I think East Lothian is particularly proud of is this intergenerational working. Well, there's some options there we could be looking at. I think that's absolutely priceless to get that kind of set up. And the fact that I, I've, I've thought about that in my head is to, to know that something like that is set up is it's just brilliant. The benefits on both sides. Can I check, Sue, do, do you do a lot with patients with dementia in nursing homes? Or is it mainly based when they're in the still in the community? Most of the stuff I've done with people with dementia in in care homes and nursing homes is yoga. <laughs> Good. Okay. Okay. So uh, you do, uh, but the I, dementia I, I, the dementia friendly community stuff is about making that link, um, so that okay. the care homes are part of the communities. And we saw some fantastic stuff during lockdown about communities embracing and connecting with nursing and care homes um just lovely stuff so that relationship is quite strong at the moment what no, was just, it in your head anyway uh, no it's just a, a personal experience my, my wife's uh, papa's in a nursing home and we've not physically seen him had a hug for over a year you know and, and we've definitely seen i mean he's He's 94 years young, which is just amazing. You know, he's a very active person. He's always done marathons. But but overall, there's definitely been a decline in the last year. And, and that's of no fault of his own. He's just not getting the same contact that we would have been seeing him once a week. So I just think it's an area that has really felt the effects of the pandemic. Possibly it's a, it's a real group of patients that are just probably not sure of their environment anyway and now no longer getting that little connection of their usual family so I just I was just interested to know if, if that's a, an area well, you do a lot of work with. We, we used to run an act, uh, a network for the activity coordinators in day centres and care homes um, and that uh, social work um, kind of took that over and then it disappeared because they were just too busy but we're talking with the um, health and well-being folks uh, health and social care partnership about bringing that back so we would bring in so you would you would get ideas but also training from people with expertise in those areas um, I think that would be a really useful thing to have and, and that can be done free because people will come and do workshops quite often for nothing. That's one of the things that Myra and I are talking about. What next? And um, also the other thing that we're supposed to work on is the self-directed support. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but the funding, you know, part of the public sector reform is that people will get money to make their own decisions about how they want to spend it. And often they would sooner spend it on, on a buddy walk um, than on a packet of pills. So again, I'm not quite sure that's working as much, but you know, we need to be pushing to get access to that, to give people the right to use their funding the way they want and to be able to access um, the services and activities they want as a result. But I don't have met anybody who's managed to do much with self-directed support, but it's a particular problem in dementia, I have to say, as you can imagine. Um, Parveen, have you come across this being working anywhere, the self-directed support bit? Is anywhere in East Lothian? No, this is the first I've heard of it, actually. You speaking about it. Yeah. No, it's, no, okay. it's meant to be, because when it was brought in, it was meant to be, uh, you know, because when I was working at Liberton, it was meant to be that when we were doing an assessment, you were meant to be giving people the options to either have the money to and, and spend it themselves, you know, on what they want to buy themselves, have the council arrange it or just have a uh, from that pocket or uh, just have a council service that certainly with older people uh, most people opted to have the council fix things um, that it was the people who are more likely to take 
the uh, do-it-yourself option, or rather those with very able relatives who could manage the, the budget, or pe able people with a disability, or say people with learning disabilities with active parents or, or carers with an interest, that some of the people go, it came up at a, a meeting on Bellhaven Community Garden the other day, and that some people are going there who have, uh, with learning difficulties, who've got self-directed support money, they've got the budget, and how they will pay that uh, safely, uh, you know, it, which is something to be taken into account. So that option is there, but from my working knowledge, people with dementia, older people were less likely to take the money and go and find their own resources. But, that, but that yeah. is something that the link workers need to be telling people that they have a right at the point of assessment, uh, working for Edi City of Edinburgh Council, that they weren't that keen on, although theoretically we were meant to be telling people that they could have the money to spend as they wanted. We weren't really being encouraged to, to tell them that. That's really useful, Jackie. The international research shows that older people generally are more likely to pick up these kind of self-directed support if they get a little bit of help. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're, and it actually isn't a lot of help. They just need a little bit of help at the beginning and then they're off. And that that is yeah. missing from our system. We don't include that little bit of help anymore. Um, no, they were just, you know, it was a case of, right, you can have, you know, £60 a week. Uh, you know, the theory was that if you wanted to, you could organise to go fishing with Bob. That's what my senior used to give us the example of somebody who wanted to go fishing with a companion. But people felt that they needed more support. And as I say, it depended on having uh, able, you know, able family to help. What's the ground covered? What do we think? Go back, sorry, to the intergenerational thing. Um, just this week, we have managed to start up bootbug sessions again in the garden. Um, limited numbers, of course, social distance, and we're not allowed to sing, but we're doing rhymes and stories. So we just uh, it was, went very well here in Musselburgh yesterday. We're now booking up for next week. People have got to book in advance. I'm just sitting thinking, we used to do it in the care home. We used to take bootbug along to daycare centres and the care homes. And we are thinking, I wonder if it's something we could start doing again with the care homes, if we could do it in the gardens. Um, on an outside basis. I don't know if that's something they would be allowed and I would need to get the guidelines from Scottish Book Trust. Uh, just talk to great. just talk to Susan Susan at S Green um, mm -hmm. and uh, she's really keen to do stuff and mm -hmm. um, they come to the health and wellbeing group. Um, so again, that link is really mm -hmm. good and you just need to do it with one that feels ready. Yeah, yeah because you know, we're, we're start not using with whoever's ready. Yeah, just get the back. Can you I mean, can you clap and drum yeah. if you can't sing? Yeah, but that is really good for getting the mm -hmm. rhythm and the movement. I've seen it myself in yeah. Edgman on the Harlow Hill and yeah. watching oh. them join in and get involved. We tried to make sure we were doing older rhymes that the older generation knew um, so that they could join in with the kids and it was great to see it in action. When we had the babies there, but obviously we won't be able to do that. But I wonder if there's nothing to stop the staff going along and doing a session just with the elderly ones and yeah. be good with it. Yeah. There are issues coming up because, uh, you know, say we had a D Dunbar Day Centre committee meeting yesterday and I was talking to the manager and they're hoping to reopen on Monday and they'll be open three days a week uh, and that uh, they were allowed six who will be in two bubbles of three in, in, different, in different rooms. Uh, and I was talking and saying about, and they used to go to the sing-along group at Dunbar Library mm -hmm. and the things going in to the day centre as well. And what Jamie was saying was that they won't be able to have people going in mm -hmm. to do things like entertainment or activities right. uh, because 
because uh, they'd only be able to get to one bubble. That might cause, a, 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 you know, that they, that might then cause uh, concern. You use the windows. Left out. And you so it might windows. also hit care homes about who they're allowed to have in. Yeah. But it's up to them to decide and, um, yeah, and they have windows. With the levels. Yeah, Lisa Jamie care was home saying, was it, Jamie was care saying it was level, all level four. But they make that decision every day. So, I mean, just leave, you just need to let them know you're there, Wilma. And I'm sure yeah. Susan will make You're that happy decision. to do it in the garden, not even yeah. going, you know exactly. what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. that's what we're doing here. Yeah. yeah, and the windows. There's a load of stuff happens through windows. We were, yeah. we were at the Fraser Centre, weren't we, Roseanne? And we were sitting there in the cafe, which is open and safe. And they've got a wee garden and a massive window. You could just have a whole play out. <laughs> the the oh, I've got, got in my head, there was a play going on and it was summer and I got wee pins. I know they were very happy. But anyway, <laughs> enough of my like, fantasies. Somewhere, somewhere, like, uh, somewhere like the care home bit of Bellhaven, uh, that they've got the community garden, uh, that the uh, Lama Muir house has a garden and a bit of a promenade overlooking the sea. Huh? But yeah, certainly, yeah. Jamie, but. You know, it would be, would be a disappointment if Jamie was saying no to people going in. Yeah. No, I think we're not there yet on that. Yeah. So intergenerational, lots of stuff. My other generations working together, Lorene, um, they've got lots of great examples, haven't they, of um, possibilities and ideas. And I don't know what's happening with the training for the intergenerational working, whether or not we got around to doing any or... Yeah, there's still possibility for, you know, an intergenerational session if people want to learn more about how to, you know, um, start kind of start up an intergenerational project or, or work in that way. So if anybody is interested, um, more than happy to set that up. Um, in terms of the examples um, that Loreen and uh, Generations Working Together have, um, there has been a, a fair bit of activity over um, sort of COVID and lockdown, um, a lot of digital stuff, obviously. Um, and then we've also had an example um, sent through recently that was pre-COVID, um, but it was an intergenerational um, with the Scottish Ballet and it was a theatre performance um, with school children and, and care homes. So um, we've got that example to share as well. So we can we can share that with everybody. Um, but I think a lot of the you know, a lot of the work and examples has been obviously pre-COVID and there's been a lot of barriers um, and challenges since. So it'll be nice to to know kind of what, what we are able to do now moving forward. Um, so yeah, if, if anybody is interested in intergenerational uh, learning more, um, then yeah, happy to do that. So, so let us know. Just put your thought if you want to, if you think it's a good idea, yeah. Well, one's enough. <laughs> Right, two, right, we'll do it. We'll, okay. Should we do a pop-up? Um, yeah. yeah. We, we had done work um, into the generational meals um, between our organisation and North Berwick Youth Trust, and they haven't happened since, uh, since last March, but I'm fairly confident that uh, when we're permitted to do so, that uh, we'll, we'll want to, to revert to that because it works well. And with a bit of training, it can work even better. Uh, I, I don't think we, we sell our um, intergenerational working that we do in East Lothian mm -hmm. um, as much as we could. I think we should be going up for the, the awards next year when they come back with a whole range, a whole, again, a delight, a bouquet of uh, projects um, that fit. And there's plenty of guidance to make sure they link with the school curriculum um, and all the rest of it now. So there's quite a lot of work, isn't there, Maya, yeah. around that, which takes it upon the, let's just bring people together and, you know, to really making it work for children and young people, as well as for older people. And it's really some really good training around. Yeah. It's a and recipe okay, that's definitely going to, sorry, I'll let you go. Well. No, on you go, Abby, it's fine. <laughs> no, no, I was just going to say, it's, it's, it's a recipe that just has, it, it will always work because you're educating both. And if you, I think the more extremes you can get is probably the better, you know, because one's going to learn from the other one. The only thing I was going to say, just to follow up, Oma, with what you said about the singing, anecdotally, when we speak to my wife's papa on the phone, uh, anytime he's 
particularly down, it will just go give us a wee singing in the rain, and he'll just sing singing in the rain, and it's and it, it literally just brings him back to life, yeah. you know. And it's it's even been on days when we've been told that he's maybe been feeling a wee bit down, he's been struggling with his chest, and 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 it just it just lifts it. So I think that's it excellent. does definitely. And going back to I know Derek Franz, who's the the librarian at Preston Lodge High School, he's really keen on intergenerational. Um, we worked, we had a lot of things planned before COVID, and obviously, boom. But um, he's a guy that's really keen to get the kids working with the elderly as well. The last thing I was just going to say, just I probably need to head off. My my next meeting got delayed, so that's why I managed another five ten minutes here. Uh, I was just going to say that if I know there is a financial. Thing. Everyone needs to make an earning of whatever they're doing. But what I would say is if, if you are approaching GPs or link workers, I would think I would go in at an educational level. OK, you, you, you'll struggle to probably get to meet the GPs unless you've got a direct connection. Nowadays, you probably struggle to meet the practice manager, but that would have been probably the best point. But if you can go in with an educational level, for example, when we do the Yoga for Health, we've got like a one sheet summary. It's very clear. This is the groups that you probably want to send in this direction. Here's the benefits. This is what you get from it. And it's 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 if you can imagine a GP's got a 10 minute appointment and they're floored and it's it's something at the end of that consultation, the GP doesn't need to be an enthusiast for lifestyle medicine. OK, but they do need to have an understanding of what it is. So if they have some form of idea that, oh, actually, I remember that leaflet and that's a really good gardening service and it works and it's a, it's a good collection. And it is only literally them saying, here's the leaflet, go and check it out. Now, I know link workers are the people that should be able to put that all together, but they're going to be snowed as well. You know, their, their whole role has changed in the last year. So they're going to come back into it now. And they're going to see a range of activities and they won't know where to go. So if you can get your link worker and it might be five or six phone calls, it might be 10 or 12 emails. But if you can get through to them and just say, look, this is the activity I really want you to give it a shot. I think you're going to have more chance of getting down further, further down the line. It might mean that you're running certain services for free for a certain amount of time. But I think in the long term, it will become like a reflex decision. Working as a GP, I know the things in my local area that I know that are set up. And it's just like, there's like active groups, it's like discount members for certain gyms. I know that's there, it's never changed. So my reflex will always be to go there. So whatever way you can educate them, I think is the best. The very last thing I'll just say is like, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate being here. Uh, Sue's got all my details. If, if I can bring anything else to the table, you wanna link in with me, if you want to come try a yoga class for yourself, please do. I'm, I'm always happy to be involved. So thanks for having me. Thank you, Avi. <laughs> Namaste. <Take care. laughs> Namaste. See you later, guys. <laughs> Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Oh, Avi's just Hello. lovely. He's just so lovely. I hope that oh, was okay. Sorry, Avi, come late. Where's Avi from? Glasgow. Uh -huh. He's... Um, He's a GP in Glasgow, uh, but also a yoga teacher, which is why I know him. Um, so he's he's working to serve, to get people moving. We heard what he was, get people moving. Yeah. So he said he'd come along because, you know, there the Yoga for Health, there's a few programs, but as he was saying, there is, even if you've got the evidence base, so they've got randomized control trials showing three, three particular yoga approaches work for lower backs, social isolation and mental health, blah, 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 older people. Um, but you still can't get people to take them up, even as he was saying, they're offering them free in Glasgow. So you know, what do you have to do to get um, GPs to link people to things? And then he said at the end, how you do it, <laughs> think, which was good, which was good. But that's one thing now we've got the link workers, you know, that, you know, they've only been in place a few weeks. But it's, you know, it's, they need to build up the knowledge of what's there, which is partly why, you know, the health and wellbeing group, try, you know, trying to tell them what is there. Uh, I think it's the more detail, it's the slightly understanding as well, instead of just a lift, list, aren't we? We get a bit obsessed with giving people lists of what's on and making sure yeah, we've got yeah. absolute everything on that list. <laughs> Where actually what they need to understand is that there are really valuable resources in the community and they should they should not just have a list, but build those relationships and connect yeah. into them. It. Well, it's just knowing, like you're telling people, oh, this might, you know, this you might find this of use. 
so that you've actually been to something like Bell Avon Community Garden or you've been to the ridge so you know what it's about you know and you've been to the library yeah yeah it's, or you've been yeah. and done the knitting at uh, uh, knit and natter at the uh, the uh, Dunbar Community Craft Centre and Shed yeah does so anyone know who the workers are in Musselboro how do um, I find out uh, contact Stuart Baxter Stuart Baxter right yeah he should be able to tell you um, and if not he can he'll find out perfect yes, thanks Jane Ogden Smith knew as well because she knew who had uh but she knew Stu who had the chat franchise. Yeah, but Stuart, Stuart is the Musselboro contact. So if Stuart doesn't know, he's the community, he's the connected communities team, then Stuart needs to find out. So yeah. kill two birds with one stone. Ask yeah. him if he doesn't know he's got... Okay, sorry, I'm terribly devious, uh, but yeah. Jane's got enough to do. <laughs> yeah, Stuart's a great guy. He's, he's keen to help us out. So yeah, no, that's perfect. If he doesn't... Right? Yeah, that's great. And then and then you might have a conversation with him about what you're thinking of doing and he might take that back or into the, hopefully he'll take mm -hmm. that back to Janice. Who's yeah, I've got a, a few group. ideas turning away now, Sue, because I'm thinking, right, we've got Bitbug in the garden, which we're allowed to do. Mm. I wonder if I could have a dementia group in the garden. So this is all turning on nice days, you know what I mean? Because well, we've got a nice garden space out the back. Well, let's chat about that uh, because mm -hmm. we are having a serious discussion in Mossopur, as you know, about the meeting centre there. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah. OK, so lots of ideas, suggestions. Mm -hmm. I've got some things I want to follow up with Jude about um, some of the things there. Um, Sam Scott, who uh, works for Edinburgh Leisure, is um, he's got... He's got a bigger job now, but basically he ran a dementia buddy project to get people to go to the gym and to do walking mm -hmm. and stuff. And that is now a dementia mental health. So it's just mental health, really, um, role. And that he's not here today because he's, he's interviewing for someone to work with him on that post. But he was quite keen to come and do a session to explain how he set it up and how it worked. Um, it was a life change he's trust funded, so he didn't need to worry about the money. He got shed loads of money. But it'd be interesting to talk about the model and how translatable it is. And he's very keen to do that. So um, I'd, I'd like to get Sam along to talk about that. And he's also very good if there's a specific dementia thing, not just the, mm -hmm. the work there. Um, what else? I mean, do you think it's a conversation that we do we need to have another bit of this conversation? Have we got as far as we need to go? What do you think? So I wonder if there could be more conversation around, maybe not today, because um, I need to head off as well, but yeah. about the body walk inside of things. Um, I, I, I don't know, I just feel like that really needs to be um, looked at and, you know, people need to come together to figure out, okay, how do we get the volunteers? Um, just with obviously things opening back up, you, you'll find a lot of people are a bit anxious now. Um, you'll know yourself, people want to come on Zoom rather than face to face. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder if that's a way, a way in to kind of get yeah. people back out in the community. That would be great. I mean, it's certainly a lot of interest in that. What does everybody think? Yeah. 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 Great. Good. So we'll have a walking pop-up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, excellent. Which we thought about doing, but um, and struggled to get people who are interested, but we have now, so that's fine. Yeah, because yeah, say it was so... so Susan Foggy uh, from Haddington, one of the Haddington TRAs, they got money off the area partnerships for uh, doing uh, buddy walks and things. Well, ask Sus Susan to come along. I mean, it yeah, can be people she, who are doing it. She hasn't been at the be. Dunbar uh, Health and Wellbeing Group for a bit. But, you know, she's on well, just, we'll put the link out and we'll put the link out through the health and wellbeing groups too. Um, and uh, let's just see fix a date i mean obviously this time suits us because we're all here um yeah. do you want us to stick with a thursday or would a tuesday be any good for folks tuesdays, are, off, tuesdays are often quite bad for people yeah i'm happy with a thursday yeah. okay mm -hmm. right we'll pick a thursday between now and um july <laughs> 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 that isn't one yeah. next time we've got um uh james 
McKillop coming to talk about living with dementia. Yeah, um, than that. He's great, is James. He keeps mm-hmm. saying, I can't do this. He's been doing this. He's been living with dementia for 20 odd years. Are you off, Jude? Yeah, I'll be in touch, Jude. Don't worry. There's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, so, um, yeah, he's he's interested. And Paula Brown will come along with him as well. Yeah, so. yeah. No, right, well, let's do that then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but certainly, you know, say part of what Dunbar Day Centre will be doing, you know, they'll have the people in the centre, but also it's that you know, what they've been doing during lockdown and what, they, yeah. what they've been told to continue is the outreach stuff, which includes taking people for walks and things. We've all been walking a bit more, haven't we? Yeah. But it's, 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 <laughs> and I've got loads of people who've got really stiff from walking and got bad knees who want to do yoga, which is just brilliant. <laughs> that makes me happy too. Yay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's oh, yeah. People, you know, that even here, you know, and you've probably got the same in North Berwick, nice places to walk. But people who shielding, really anxious about going for a walk again by themselves. Yeah. And we did have somebody going flashing at John Muir Country Park that put people off even more. <laughs> right, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, uh, but it, it is the thing, you know, about, you know, the buddying and joining people up. Um, I'm absolutely. So I'm slightly distracted now because it's raining and I've got my sheets out. <laughs> Oh no! It's okay. It's okay. They just make them easier to iron. Um, guys, that was really helpful. Thank you so much for coming along. I hope you got something out of it. Um, and uh, it sounds like that we do want to meet again. We want to focus on walking next time, yeah. and I'll do some digging around the other stuff. And um, we'll pick up Wilma with Mossabra. Yeah, yeah. I'm Janice. Parving, so I'll be in town. Now, actually, meant to be going away to do an outreach book bug session at a nursery. So I'm. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Parving, Paul said that you would link back to the work that he's doing, and also yeah. Ed's Ed's doing some community capacity work as well. That sounds like it's relevant, but we're not quite sure what he was. So it'd be good to connect. We also wonder should we connect in with um, Visal with the third sector interface around volunteering and training volunteers, Tracy has come to meetings sometimes, but um, it's it's useful for them because they should be doing a lot of the capacity building yes. as well. So it mm-hmm. um, might be worthwhile just hooking in with Tracy and seeing if she can yeah. join us. Yeah, uh, although I think they have an issue of capacity. <laughs> Indeed, but there's no, but inviting yes. is... Oh, yes, yes, you know, no, is, but, but, they're, but they're the official third-party interface who get funded from the Scottish Government. It's part of the <laughs> third sector. Yeah, exactly. But that's why we're involving them. Um, and I've just seen Jude come in to say she's really sorry. It sounds like I hope they're knocking her house down around her by the side of it. But anyway, so she says really sorry. But she's there if we need her. Excellent. Yeah. OK, guys. Well, thank you again. Um, brilliant. Oh, brilliant. by the way, is it like your sign, Sue? Yes. Is it show the right way around? Yes. Good. I've got the mirror thing. <laughs> yeah, she likes the last line. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mine appeared. I don't know where they are, but anyway, so I noticed you were batting her out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Jill. <laughs> On that note, I'm going. Have a good day. Bye, Bye. 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 B